What's up, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Sayushi, and today we are going to be talking about Faruzan, the new four-star character that is going to be added to the game. It's going to be a bow character. For those of you that just want the information and get out, well, here is the Ascension card. You can end up just taking a screenshot of it, or there's a download link in the description. Generally speaking, this character is going to end up taking resources from the Scaramouche boss, and as far as I know, is going to end up being in the banner of Scaramouche, or the Wanderer as well. I've already got another video that talks about that character because it is the new five-star character, whereas this is going to end up being the four-star bow animal character. Yet another bow character, oh dear lord. Now, obviously being an archer character, it means that we're going to end up having a charged shot that is going to end up being Animo. But let's move on to the elemental skill, which is Wind Realm of Nasan Jinan. I, I don't know, let's just call it the Wind Realm, right? Uh, so anyway, Faruzan deploys a polyhedron that deals area of effect Animo damage to nearby opponents. She will also enter the Manifest Gale state. While in the Manifest Gale state, Faruzan's next fully charged shot will consume this state and will become a hurricane arrow that contains high pressured currents. This arrow deals animal damage based on the amount of damage of a fully charged aim shot from normal attack, just damage in general. So that, that is, I guess, cool. So anyways, there's the pressurized collapse. Uh, so the hurricane arrow will apply a pressurized collapse effect to the opponent of uh, or to the opponent or character hit. Character hit being key word. You can actually shoot your teammates to get this pressurized collapse uh, with your hurricane arrows. So this effect will be removed after a short delay, creating a vortex that deals area of effect animo damage and pulls nearby objects and opponents in. If the hurricane arrow does not hit any opponent or character, it will create a pressurized collapse effect at its point of impact. So think of like a four star version of a venti ult. So it's not gonna be nearly as good, but it still ends up having its functionality. The vortex damage is considered elemental skill damage. Then there's the ultimate ability, the wind's secret ways. Farazan deploys a dazzling polyhedron that unleashes a whirlwind pulse and deals area of effect to animo damage. While the dazzling polyhedron persists, it will continuously move along a triangular path. Once it reaches each corner of its triangular path, it will unleash one more whirlwind pulse, which, Here's the thing, even when they ended up showing the official footage of this character's ultimate ability, like I, I was already very perplexed at the fact that it's moving along this set path uh, and questioned, well, doesn't that mean that it has the opportunity to miss opponents? Yes, it does. In the official footage that they showed, the ability ended up missing its mark like a couple times. So it's kind of a bad ult, unfortunately. But anyways, moving on to the Whirlwind Pulse, which is the final... Uh, you know, once it finishes its cycle, it's going to do a Whirlwind Pulse. So when Whirlwind Pulse is unleashed, it will apply Perfidious Wind's Bale to nearby enemies, decreasing their animal resistance. The Whirlwind Pulse will also apply Prayerful Wind's Benefit to all nearby party members when it is unleashed, granting them an animal damage bonus. So a very complimentary support specifically for animal characters, which makes sense because it's trying to complement the Wanderer, but I think it would be very, very good for somebody like your boy Kazaha as well. Moving on to the passive talents. Gains 25% more rewards when dispatched in Sumeru. The second one is when Farazan is in the Manifest Gale state created by Wind Realm Nasababa. Uh, the amount of time taken to charge the next shot is decreased by 60%, and she can apply the Wind's Secret Ways Perfidious Wind Bale which was the you know ability that we trigger in the ultimate. Um, it will end up triggering to opponents who are hit by the vortex created by the pressurized collapse. So ultimately you need to end up having uh, your charge shots go off first, and then you can end up triggering the passive of your ultimate, like the extra damage that it would end up doing. So it's just stacking damage on damage, which is kind of cool and complimentative. Uh, and then the third passive is when characters affected by the wind's secret ways, prayer for wind gift deal animo damage using normal charged plunging attacks, elemental skills or elemental bursts to opponents, they will gain the hurricane guard effect. This damage will be increased based on 32% of Farazan's base attack. One instance of hurricane, uh, hurricane Guard can occur every 0.8 seconds. 
This damage bonus will be cleared after player, prayerful wins benefit expires or after the effect is triggered once. So you basically just end up getting a lot of extra damage for uh, you know a bunch of different attacks. Again, complementing the Wanderer very, very much. Moving on to her constellations, her C1, Farazan can fire off a maximum of two hurricane arrows because normally you only fire off one at a time. Uh, so anyways, two hurricane arrows using a fully charged aim shot while under the single realm wind realm of Nazam Jim effect her E skill. Her C2 is the duration of dazzling polyhedron created by the wind's secret ways is increased by six seconds. That's a pretty significant amount. Her C3 makes it so that her uh, E ability ends up gaining additional levels. C4, the vortex created by pressurized collapse will restore energy to Farazan based on the number of opponents hit. So one opponent heals two energy um, and each additional opponent hit will restore 0.5 more energy for Farazan with a maximum of four energy being restored her vortex which i mean i guess it's good but whatever that's kind of eh. uh her c5 is going to end up increasing her ultimate by a couple levels and then of course her c6 is going to make it so that characters affected by the wind secret ways prayerful wind benefit uh have 40 percent increased crit damage when they deal animo damage when the active character deals damage while affected by prayerful winds benefit they will apply pressurized collapse to the opponent damage so you basically get the venti vacuum even on like other melee characters or in this instance quite specifically it means that all of your normal attacks as the wanderer would end up becoming pressurized and just pull enemies in which is pretty crazy to have this character be so complementative towards one specific character this effect can be triggered once every three seconds and the cooldown is shared between all party members but of course that is her high constellation so for attributes generally speaking it seems like she only really scales off of attack percentage so even if you're using her as a support that would be the primary thing that i would focus on over any other ability generally though if you want to end up using her more offensively you could go for crit rate and crit damage but why you're just gonna want to go for an attack percentage like all in on that because of the fact that she's going to end up being so supportive towards other characters rather than using her as a main uh for your bow there are a couple different options you know any five star bow is going to do just fine um but otherwise i would be going for attack percentage bows so i would actually use this one um or even this one primarily just because they're going to end up complementing her quite well now we do actually have a couple different new artifact sets coming with this update one of them is quite complementary to the wanderer which increases animo damage by 15 percent with the two piece and then the four pieces when charge attacks hit opponents the equipped character's normal attack speed will increase by 10 percent while normal charged and plunging attack damage will be increased by 40 percent for 15 seconds which obviously is very complementative towards the wanderer but it doesn't mean that you couldn't use it on her as well but for my money i would probably just go for like a typical animo set just because you know this you know the the verdescent set is going to end up having the increased swirl damage by 60 percent decreases uh, opponent's elemental resistance to the element infused in the swirl by 40 percent for 10 seconds which can be really really good considering the fact that uh you know she's going to end up triggering multiple reactions with her swirling effect of the pressure uh pressurized arrows uh however if you want just raw damage uh, again i would recommend going all in for attack uh, as many artifacts as you can you can end up using two uh, a two-piece gladiator set uh two piece of the uh uh, Shimanawa, right? Because this is going to also end up having attack percentage just so that you could have her attack percentage like as high as possible, prioritizing attack on all of her artifacts. Uh, again, I would go for attack percentage on the sands. I'd probably go for attack percentage on the goblet unless you want to end up using the animal one so that she isn't completely useless. But again, it's going to end up being a character that I personally would build 100% to support and just completely synergize with making one other character look a lot better. And then of course, you know, with the hat, it's going to end up being the same where it could either be crit rate, crit damage, elemental mastery, or just attack percentage. Now for the talents, uh, that, I mean, I guess generally speaking, using her as support, what I would probably prioritize is maybe her E, her alt, and then her base attack. That if it was me anyways, just because it seems like that's going to be the most complementative to the character, especially because the E ability is going to be able to eventually trigger the passive damage buff of the ultimate. And I like the idea of vacuuming enemies in. That just seems really, really important to me because it can be 
really, really detrimental to end up having in a character that can pull characters in. Like, you know, Venti for the longest time is the primary one that everybody uses just because everything gets pulled in. Thus, you can deal damage to everything all at once. Personally, I have Kazaha, so his E ability already does the vacuum. And I think it's always great to end up having more characters dealing, vacuuming, like pulling enemies in. But again, I think that she would very, very, very much compliment the Wanderer specifically. Anyways, that's going to do it for me, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks so much for watching. Smash like, sub for more. Buy the merch you want to support the channel. And have a wonderful day, everybody.